So don't forget when you appropriate your hose on here to slide your whip check up to make sure it does the job appropriately. So close at home on the fitting, make sure it's tight, slide the whip check down so that it's taut. So if this hose comes off, this restraint will hold that hose in a position to enable you time to diminish the air that's pushing through this particular hose. So as far as lubrication is concerned for this particular unit, we have an oiler and a regulator. And that is for the air motor that's underneath. The air motor that's underneath there pulls the air with the utilisation of fan blades through the fins on the radiator to get this air that's going in cool by the time it comes out the other side. So to appropriate the pull of air, we utilise a fan underneath. Now the fans on this particular unit is quite sizeable to have the amount of air adequate to cool the fins on the radiator. So this particular regulator, it says here in big letters, do not exceed 60 psi on air motor. So this regulator appropriates the air or the rotational spin of that particular pneumatic motor underneath. The pneumatic motor underneath has two bearings in it, top and bottom, and two seals top and bottom. So they need lubrication. This particular thing is an oiler. It's called an automatic oiler. The automatic oiler with the air from this particular receiver comes through the regulator. The regulator appropriates the amount of air we put through there. So the air motor needs 60 psi. So you'll screw this regulator knob down until you reach the 60 psi. Don't exceed it because the bearings can't cope with the amount of speed you're putting on them. And then the air travels through here and through a Venturi system. There's a little sight glass there. The Venturi system takes the oil with it down to the air motor. So the oil has a sight glass. In that sight glass, you'll see a little drip. And it says here, lubricate with one drop per minute of SAE 10 for every 50 to 75 centimetres. What is that? Lubricate one drop per minute. So one, oh. So this little sight glass here tells me or shows me a drip. So for every drip, it's appropriating or dispensing some detergent oil into this airline. So that's lubricating the air motor that's spinning with 60 psi of air over it. So without oil, the bearings of course will run dry. So what happens with this oil that we're shoving into this air motor, where does it go? Remember, anything that's pneumatic, where air goes in, it's gotta come out. Well, on this particular air motor itself, there's a hose here that runs down to the bottom beside the receiver that has a small muffler on it and that oil, excessive oil, runs down and is exhausted out the bottom. So the air motor itself has to exhaust somewhere. So the muffler on the bottom keeps it quiet so it doesn't um, exceed noise levels. The other aspect of it, of it of course is that it needs to vent somewhere so it vents at the bottom. If there's excessive oil dripping from the bottom of that particular vent hose, you know that there's something wrong here as far as the dispensation of oil in relation to the amount that they request here. So when they say SAE 10 detergent oil, when it's a 10, you know that it's a thin viscosity oil. So what could I use in there? Just say, for example, I'm on site and I think, uh-oh, we've run out of SAT, SAE 10 oil. What do I do? To be quite honest with you, any low viscosity oil is more than adequate to, to lubricate that air motor. So I could use TELUS 10, I can use automatic transmission fluid, ATF, which is red. That's fine because it's of low viscosity. So whilst it's of low viscosity, it has the capacity to get through that little hole there and drip into the airline and lubricate that. So as long as you're lubricating that air motor, there's no problems. Now you see there's two valves here. One valve here is for this particular regulator and all it is a moisture trap. So the moisture can build up in here and it has a sight glass here to indicate to me how much moisture may have accumulated on this side of this particular unit. So the valve here, you can, you can vent that or exhaust that valve with air on it if you wish to or without air on it. Ultimately, it'll come out of there. On this side of it, there is the oil planetary or gallery 
that holds the oil that I, I require to lubricate this particular unit. So the air's coming in, going through the regulator, going through the oil, and going back out the other side. So as it goes through, it pulls the oil from this particular vessel back through and into the system. So this one here has a sight glass on it. Now this is not water or moisture. This one here is actually oil. That particular oil that you'll fill this when you need to replenish it as it shows on this sight glass. So on the sight glass itself is, it says maximum full. So the thing to remember is with these is that be very careful of that little o-ring on the edge of that bowl because if you damage that they're an odd size so if you're out on site and you damage that you may have to wait until another one a replacement can arrive also too you can see in this the oil is nice and clean clear which is reciprocated in the the um, sight glass itself so that you can see how much oil is in there and when it needs to be replenished. So always when you put these particular bowls back on, it's important to have a piece of rag and just wipe around the top gently, not to get any contaminants in there, and wipe around the seat too, where it goes in, so that you ensure it's nice and clear and clean. Then a small amount of lubricant around the O-ring and put it back into situ. So, it's a quite a uh, agricultural thread on these, which assists in getting it back into its housing. And then of course, don't over tighten it. If it was loose, air would leak from there, so you need to make sure that it is home, but don't over tighten it. So with this valve, if you open this valve, that'll vent that and, and enable all the oil to escape. But, so this particular one, don't open that butterfly. This particular one is to vent any excessive moisture that may occur. So say for example, excessive moisture you say to yourself, but it's an after cool, it's supposed to remove all the moisture. If for example, I did, had that valve shut and it wasn't venting on that primary um, bowl here, it can build up moisture and still send it through the other end. So it's important that you vent this particular moisture accumulator with the valve cracked slightly open before it starts entering the cooler. Now the compressor will make a lot of moisture, particularly if the relative humidity is high or substantial. So there is always the opportunity for the compressor to make moisture. What exacerbates it too is the hose is laying in the sun 